Hey guys, so I have been thinking what build I should do with the new Agnostic Keystone. And in the end I decided to go with the Dark Pack. Because Dark Pack sacrifices your life and you need some kind of life sustain. And the Agnostic Keystone drains 20% of your maximum mana per second and heals your life. So I needed a build that has decent effective life pool, a lot of max mana and mana sustain. So this build actually has so much sustain that I actually even heal when I take damage. And uh, I'm gonna show a chart later on showing exactly how all, all the mechanics works and it does have pretty cool mechanics. But for now just take a look at this high meta fight. During high meta smoke cloud phase I can basically stand still and out heal it. I was also able to face tank minotaur and that is quite impressive because this is not a tanky build and it does has its own drawbacks. As you may know I really like high region builds and talking about high region builds check this out. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. I got really addicted to this game and I have been playing for a month now. Since you are following my channel you probably like planning builds and that's why I think you're gonna love this game as well. It has hundreds of cool champions and builds, awesome graphics, great campaign and storyline, multiple dungeons with big bosses and it's really cool how you need special builds to defeat those bosses. Also PvP battles, clan bosses, lots of item sets, oh and it's all free to play. Honestly it can easily compete with PC games. In fact I just read news that Raid will soon release official PC versions. Yay! Now I mentioned I like high region builds so let me show you this champion. It is from Lizardman faction and it is a tank which can buff ally with a shield and give counter attack. So if enemies hit that champion I hit them back. I gave him two sets of items. With both sets this champion heals 15% of his maximum life per turn and that makes him very tanky and great addition to my team. Raid Shadow Legends has daily rewards, missions, challenges. Look there are even dragons. Click the link in the description down on the game. Get fit to thousand silver an epic champion and even join my clan you can find me in the game under the name wolfio and let's go raiding now a bit more about cons and pros of this build. Dark Pack right from the start had pretty bad single target damage and clear speed and it just didn't feel very good. I know Octavian was also doing Dark Pack build and MB Extreme as well and we all kind of started almost at the same time accidentally and we all are doing different version of it but I believe all of us kind of agree that Dark Pack had pretty bad damage at the start and doesn't have very high damage in the end. The playstyle with this build in the end was very sketchy. The clear speed was not amazing but I can run almost any map mod. 60% reduced recovery rate was very painful but I could still do it. And the build itself is not really expensive. I only needed 6 link uh, cloak of defiance and I did experiment with different body armors but in the end I decided to go with the cloak of defiance. But you could actually craft a better rare. So in the end I think the conclusion is that you probably should not be doing this build but I think you will still find it interesting how I build around the agnostic. Just a quick uh, warning before I show the chart it will have some numbers and math so here it is and I'm gonna try to quickly explain how everything works and what are all these numbers are. So let's say theoretically if I'm taking 1000 damage per second. I do have 20% damage taken gain as life over 4 seconds. I do have 54% uh, uh, damage taken gain as mana over 4 seconds. Uh, and I do get that from uh, this mod. On rings I do also have it on, on uh, threshold jewels and uh, watcher sai combined I have 54% uh, damage taken gain as uh, mana over 4 seconds. Then I also have 20% increased life recovery rate from the belt and I do have 25% increased mana recovery rate also from the watcher sai. This is just showing the region that I have from this. So if I would be taking 1000 damage per second I would be regenerating 240 life over 4 seconds of 60 life per second and 168 mana per second. So 60 life per second, 168 mana per second. Now the agnostic drains 20% of my maximum mana per second and it recovers the equal amount of life. Uh, let's say you drain one mana and you recover one life. Uh, which is also increased by life recovery rate. So, so it drains 632 uh, mana per second. But it recovers more than that because I do have life recovery rate. So it uh, gives me 758 uh, life per second regenerated. It's not actually a regen. It's actually a recover so it doesn't show in the, in the start window. Now I did not uh, uh, write it here but I also have... Uh, 9 to 1 life region per second and I do have mana. Uh, this is actually not all the mana region that I have uh, and this is also not affected by recovery rate so I actually have more than that. So in the end I am regenerating 927 uh, life per second 
and I'm also regenerating 508 mana per second. That is with all the degen. Uh, and that's when, when taking 1000 uh, damage per second. However, since this is mind over matter and I have 40% mind over matter, so I split that 1000 damage into 600 uh, damage taken, um, 600 damage taken from life and 400 damage taken from mana. When I take 1000 damage per second, in the end I'm actually healing for 327 life and 408 mana. So I take damage but I heal more than I take. Now all those numbers that you saw was just while taking damage and not counting the dark pact uh, sacrifice of life. Now let me quickly go over my items. Cloak of Defiance, big mana, mana regen and additional 10% damage taken from mana before life. More of Conquest, simply because damage taken gain as life over 4 seconds. You could use different helmet. Belt with life recovery rate. Gloves with very fat life roll. A bit mana. And global chance to blind on hit. Boots, life, mana, percentage mana, some resistances, movement speed and onslaught on kill. The boots with percentage mana I believe drops from the temple and they are not expensive to get. A lot of life and mana region, resistances which you're gonna need. And then you can craft this 6% damage taken gain as mana over 4 seconds when hit. You can craft this on amulet as well but keep in mind if the ring or amulet already has flat mana you cannot craft this mod. And as for my amulet, I decided to use blue pedal amulet, which uh, does have a lot of mana region implicit. And then I managed to roll grid multiplier, life, and crafted the uh, mana region. As for the weapon, I am using Cerberus Limb because it does give spell leech, as long as my shield has at least 30% block. So my shield does have 30% block, life, mana, some resistances. Energy shield is completely useless because Agnostic uh, disables it. I do have two threshold jewels for Rallying Cry. And correct me if I'm wrong, but since they do only have medium radius, you can only place one here and another one here. And I don't think that there is any other spot for it. Which means for Agnostic Keystone, you're gonna have to choose a different spot than Mind Over Matter. And I chose to use that jewel near Chaos and Occultion Keystone. For the flask, I am using the Diamond Flask, the Sulphur Flask for more damage and regen, and Lavianga Spirit, sometimes if I run out of mana I use it and that allows me to still cast spells. Now for skills and links, uh, Dark Pack is level 21, quality 23, linked with Intensify, Void Manipulation, Spell Echo, Added Chaos Damage and Arcane Surge level 15. I do one higher level Arcane Surge because it does provide me more mana regen. And Intensify, it increases your AoE and if you stand still and keep recasting it, it shrinks your AoE but gives you more damage. But that also for some reason felt like I'm sometimes not dealing damage, I think the AoE becomes too small and I need to get closer to targets to continue hitting. For Auras, I have Zealotry and Clarity linked with Enlighten. Also I have some Enlighten Golem but uh, it, it's kind of useless. Also I have Spell Totem linked with Wither and Multi Totems. I also do have Val Righteous Fire linked with Increased Duration. Higher level Caswin Damage taken linked with Despair Curse, Increased Duration and Immortal Call. Then I do have two War Cries. Rallying Cry and Abyssal Cry linked with Increased Duration and Increased Area of Effect. Rallying Cry has massive AoE and you only need to reach at least one enemy to get the buff and to trigger threshold jewels to give you more mana sustain. And the Rallying Cry buff effect lasts around 15 seconds in my case. So I can still juggle between two War Cries. Abyssal Cry I didn't really use that often, I tried using it couple times for extra pops, but it didn't really help with the Grease Free that much, it did help against Porcupines. And lastly passive skill tree. I chose to go with the Scion because it was more flexible and I did first go with the Juggernaut because I need a stun immunity and it does give the build a bit more tankiness by generating endurance charges and then I picked Assassin because I wanted more crit and it does generate power charges. Initially I was planning to go with the Hierophant for more max mana and uh, damage taken from mana before life and Trickster for more mana region but I really needed that stun immunity and a bit more tankiness and I really needed that damage so Assassin. Oh and I also connected to the shadow starting area which only saves me 3 points. And on the passive skill tree I got a bit of life, mana, mana region, crit, cast speed. I am also using pure talent unique jewel so I did connect to the witch starting area and the shadow starting area like I said which does provide me an extra 0.5 base crit chance and 0.5% uh, of maximum mana region per second. And that is pretty much all. Also I noticed that dark pack doesn't really scale very well with maximum life. It is much easier to scale its damage by using spell damage, crit, chaos damage, cast speed, 
And remember, the more life you have, the more life you're gonna sacrifice with the dark pack, and the more life you're gonna have to regen. Which also means it's much easier to use like a low life build because you cannot really kill yourself with the dark pack. So you would just run out of life and would not get the bonus uh, damage, but you would not need to worry about uh, sustaining your life. And that's all. The new league is coming very soon and information about it is gonna be released on August 20th. So I'm probably gonna slow down my videos until the next league or before the next league. And for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.